Hello and welcome to the Networking Partner Spotlight Show. I'm Jimmy Curtin, your host. I am CEO and founder of Next Level Sales Performance. We help companies accelerate their sales revenue and move to the next level. So I'm really pleased today to introduce our special guest. His name is Mark McIntosh. Mark is CEO and founder of a company called RevGrow. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark to introduce himself and we'll get on with the questions. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, hey, Jimmy, thanks for having me. Really appreciate the opportunity. So, yeah, as Jimmy said, I'm Mark McIntosh. I'm the CEO and founder of RevGrow, and we're here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I am very excited to be a guest on your show. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. You bet. Well, thank you for being here. So let's get into our questions. So the first question I have for you is, in business, how do you define integrity? Yeah, I kind of think of integrity a couple different ways. I mean, doing what you say you're going to do in a time frame and in a manner that you promise to do. I, I, I think of integrity that way. And then, you know, doing, doing the right thing, even if it may not be the most popular thing or the easiest route to take, and do, just doing it with honesty and doing it the right way. That's great. That, that has a lot to do with things in business as we do it today, for sure. So uh, with your company, what would you say is the value proposition of what you guys sell? Yeah, well, as you know, Jimmy, a lot of businesses out there just don't have the systems and the processes or the time to keep their sales pipeline consistently full. So we offer a, an outsourced done for you solution that you know, leverages email, leverages LinkedIn, leverages expert authority and branding, as well as content marketing. And we use a very non-salesy respectful approach to keep our clients pipelines consistently full each and every month so they don't have to worry about where their next deal will come from. That's great. That's a great service. So what would you say is the sweet spot for your business? Yeah, we, we help small businesses or divisions within a large organization. And most of them just don't have a ton of sales or marketing support. And they really value outsourcing and focusing on what they do best, running their business, you know, their areas of expertise. And they bring us in as an extension of their team and their company. So a lot of small businesses, most of them are selling high dollar services or products. And if we can help them get four to six new clients during the first year that they wouldn't have got otherwise, it can make a really big impact on their business. Absolutely, I think that's true with any company, it certainly would. So what is your favorite business tool to use when you're uh, prospecting? Well, I love LinkedIn and you know, it's, it, it's like giving everyone a shared database and there's just so much intel out there. But in our space, the B2B world, LinkedIn, uh, continues to be awesome. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. It's, it certainly is a great tool. So what is your, uh, what's your favorite method? I know, I know in business it's important for us to reach out to prospects, but it's also important for us to maintain our relationship with our clients. So what's your favorite method to, to stay top of the mind with your clients? Yeah, good question, Jimmy. I, you know, not everybody's ready to buy immediately. So it's like, what, what do you do after the initial appointment until the need arises or until they're ready to buy? You know, I, I'm a huge believer that that can really differentiate you from the competition. So I, I try to avoid the dreaded touching base or checking email or checking in email or call and yeah. With our touch points, whether we're doing it internally or for our clients, 
we want to continue to stay top of mind, obviously. We want to continue to build value, share insights, and help them throughout the sales cycle. And some of my favorite things to do are to play matchmaker, you know, make an introduction if there's a pain or something that they really need that's pressing. And right. if I know someone that can help them with that, I love to make those introductions. You know, obviously if the opportunity comes up to where we can introduce a prospect or a new client to them, uh, a lot of value there, obviously. And, you know, I, I like to ask their opinion. I mean, a lot of people just want to help out and share their insights and offer value. So, you know, I, a lot of times I'll just call somebody and say, hey, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Maybe I'm writing a blog or putting together a webinar or right. maybe it's something specific to their space, their service, their industry. But I think asking their opinion is another good uh, touch point. So those are just a few. I mean, invite them to a webinar that's relevant to them and their business. You know, maybe send them an article, something again, that's relevant to them and their business. So things like that is what I try and do. And you know, vary it up, touch them, you know, with email one month, you know, next month do it through email, next month, uh, LinkedIn, phone call, you know, mix it up. You might send them a handwritten note one time. And, you know, so I like to vary it up and, you know, just continue to plant seeds of value into that relationship. Yeah, those are great points. That's what we call touch points. Yeah. So anytime you're reaching out and, and you're touching that prospect, as you said, whether it's email, text, telephone, even a piece of uh, snail mail, any way that you're doing that is, is always one of those touch points. And as we all know, it takes between eight and 12 touch points to actually close a prospect these days. So good, good advice. So speaking of closing, how do you know when to actually, when it's time to actually close a sale? Well, that's a good question, Jimmy, and it really varies on, you know, who you're talking with, where they're at in the decision-making process. You know, obviously there has to be pain, you know, or a problem they're trying to solve for. Right. Um, so I, I like to do, uh, you probably, I know you've heard of this, but trial closes yep. throughout the conversation just to, you know, test you know, I might say, so what do you think about what we've discussed so far? Or on a scale of one to 10, how do you see this fitting into your lead generation strategy? Or, you know, something along those lines to test, test their temperature, get a sense of their pulse, and just ask those many trial close questions, you know, throughout the process, and then you know, typically it, it feels pretty natural. And, you know, I might, I might end, and one of my favorite final, final closes is to ask the prospect what the next step should be from their perspective. And just by keeping it open-ended and asking that question, you know, that, that's a great way. And once you get off the phone or out of a meeting and you do that and, you know, it almost feels like they're closing themselves, but, you know, it's all about just, just checking their pulse throughout. And right. so that's, that's typically what I do, but there, there's a bunch of different, you know, some people like the assumptive close, you know, some people, um, you know, one, one, once they discuss the terms, you know, how it will work next steps, you know, and then, just ask, hey, are you ready to move forward? Or how's your how's your calendar look in the next week or two for us to schedule a kickoff call? Things like that. Those are all great suggestions. Absolutely great. So last question. So what is the best advice you could give any business when it comes to trying to close more business? <clears throat> you know, I um I really like the trial close questions. So 
I just think those those are so paramount and important that if you do that, maybe it's you know three or four times during the sales presentation. You know that that just makes the final close that much easier and that much more effective. Now, obviously, you have to assess their pain. You have to figure out if they have the budget for your solution. You know, ask them about the decision making prog process. Make sure that you know you have all the decision makers at the table. But probably, probably the number one is just to do those trial closes throughout the sales presentation. Super, super. Well, listen, it's, it's been, uh, been great to have you on the show today. I appreciate your, your advice and spending time with us. And, uh, I look forward to uh, visiting with you again soon. That sounds good, Jimmy. Thank you so much and have a great day. I Thanks, appreciate man. it. You yep. too.